homeless? Is it a crime to help others? Many of us don't see the things that occur on a day-to-day basis in our society. The homeless men you just saw were treated unfairly. One of them was killed, and unfortunately his life was ended for no reason, and no one is doing anything about it. Good afternoon, teachers, staff, community members, students, and Director Rivera. My name is Alejandra Ruiz. Hello, my name is Maria Altamirano, and welcome to our senior talk. As you saw in the short video clip, our senior talk today will discuss our work with homeless shelters in San Diego, specifically with the San Diego Rescue Mission. At the start of this project, the first idea to cross our minds was to give back to others. Immediately, we chose to take our time to help those in need, since we both understand how it feels to not have much. I want you to imagine something. Imagine walking down the street and you notice the homeless woman with her two children. What would you do? Would you just walk by and ignore her and her children? Or are you going to stop and try to help? Unfortunately, many people choose to ignore these situations and sometimes are led to judge the homeless due to their current situation, which we have learned happens for a variety of reasons. These reasons are due to loss of jobs, addiction to drugs, or even abusive relationships, to name a few. As we experience our senior talk, we realized that we not only wanted to help those in need, but also wanted to find a way to share our wealth. And by wealth, I don't mean having lots of money. Today, I want you to define wealthy as having the necessary goods to live a healthy life. For example, you can make someone wealthy by giving them a warm blanket, a small meal, or even a water for those hot days. It doesn't have to be a material object. It can be something as simple as a warm meal and for some acknowledgement that they are human beings and not some forgotten soul. We want to share some shocking statistics with you. Did you know that in the United States there are more than 600,000 homeless? Out of that statistics, the highest percentage are single men and families with children. Unfortunately, our government has not done as much as it can to help those in need, specifically regarding creating enough space to take shelter in. Taking a look at this graph, you can see that there are families with children who are not receiving the support that they are desperately in need of. As stated before, there are various reasons as to how someone can end up homeless and it can immediately change their lives to a point where they may not be able to get out of the situation. Due to the fact that so many people are in need, Bolin, due to the fact Volunteering at the San Diego Rescue Mission has become important to us from the start because we wanted to make a difference in our community. We did this through a variety of ways, primarily through giving our time. But as our project evolved, so what did we give back? We might only be two young girls, but I know that our help really made some people's days. At the San Diego Rescue Mission, we would help, we would help every Mondays and Thursdays by serving dinner to the women and children. We learned through this experience that for some women, this would be the only meal that they would receive that day. This made us reflect on our lives and made us even more grateful for the things we have. Yes, we are indeed grateful, not only for what we have, but also to have had the opportunity to become a part of two organizations. The first one which we mentioned was the San Diego Rescue Mission, which provides food, shelter, and opportunities for those that are in need. The days that we were volunteer, we would serve in the Women and Children's Hall. We got the opportunity to meet some of the women and got to learn a little about their lives. We also got to see how grateful everyone was for not only the food being served, but also for the volunteers that would, co that would come in to help. At the end of our shift, they were even offer us food. This was very heartwarming because although they're the ones that needed the food the most, there was something always there for us. There was nothing but smile on their faces and seeing this for the, our passion to help others. The second organization we were a part of was Father Joe's Village. They provided hope and shelter for those who are in need. We didn't get to spend a lot of time with this organization as much as we did at the rescue mission. This was due to our conflicting schedules. At the Father Joe's Village, we were served, for we were served food to men and women. We realized that the faces coming in changed every day, unlike at the San Diego Rescue Mission. Regardless, everyone was grateful, and that is what brightened our days. While assisting these two organizations, we did face a couple of challenges. 
Unfortunately, there was a couple of times where we couldn't make it to help those in need because we didn't have transportation. We tried our best to make sure we had someone to give us a ride, but sometimes it was hard. My partner and I were both involved with sports, so we had to manage our time and had to also make sure we were keeping up with classwork. There came a point where we had to choose between softball or helping the homeless. The final decision was always going to be to help the organization and helping those in need. In fact, we ended up quitting sports to focus fully on our service learning. This focus in our eyes paid off because we got to learn more and more about our help those in need. As we brainstormed on how we could actually do this, we decided that the money that we were making in our job would go towards those in need. Alejandro and I both worked at SeaWorld and decided that aside from our time, we needed to give back in other ways. We decided that half of our paycheck would go towards supplies. From there, each paycheck, we both would pitch in about $40. From there, we would go to the nearest store to buy snacks and other things we felt were necessary on a day-to-day -day basis. Then we would go to downtown and give these items out. This was one of the most gratifying things we did. We also encountered other instances where we experienced gratitude from those less fortunate. One day, I was heading into a jack-in-the-box when a homeless man came up to me and asked me if I was kind enough to give him some money so he could get something to eat. I asked him if he could wait for a couple of minutes while I went inside to grab a meal for him. When I came outside, he had a huge smile on his face and thanked me. He then said that I was a very kind person. When I left, I heard him pray to God, thanking him for what I have done, because it was the only meal that he had received that day. This is something that we want you to take to heart. Sometimes the smallest act of kindness are the most impactful. Alejandro is now going to tell you about our, our video, which we are about to show you. The video we're about to show you is a quick interview with Deborah Quackauer, the volunteer coordinator at the San Diego Rescue Mission, along with images from our experience volunteering. Let's take a look. to say that I don't think I thought that much about the homeless before coming here because I live, live in a part of town where you don't, don't see as many and that's horrible to say, not as many as down, in parts of downtown San Diego and other neighborhoods. And I really didn't think about what made people homeless. And to be here and working with everyone and seeing people all day, every day, hearing their stories about what led them to being here, with abuse and addictions and everything else and then on top of that so I see the changes that people are making in their lives and then on top of that about a very good percentage of the paid staff I work with are graduates of our programs so they can talk to the men and women here about what the place means to them it's just kind of opened my eyes as to what makes people homeless the changes they can make in their lives and then be working with them side by side three different programs. About 150 a night. Wow. And that's a mixture of the uh, transitional housing program we have, the Women and Children's Center where you yeah. serve, and our overnight shelter for women and children. So children are anywhere from babies just come out of the hospital all the way up to uh, teens and everything in between. We would like to give Deborah a quick shout out who although is not here is one of the reasons why we became passionate in helping those in need. Like we mentioned, we know how it feels to have something one day and the next day nothing. We wanted to help others just like others helped us out when we were going through this phase. Many might think that it is easy for those who, who are in need. Many might think 
that for those who are, who are in the streets are easy to get off the streets, but in fact, it is quite difficult. Due to this difficulty, many families and individuals struggle months and ends to get themselves out of this vicious cycle. After our work with the rescue mission and learning more about homelessness, we're extremely passionate about this issue and hope that many of you in the audience will take action soon. Yes, we became better people because we realized how fortunate we are to have families that provide for us. It also made us realize that helping others is such a rewarding thing to do. One thing we realized while volunteering at the San Diego Rescue Mission is that we never saw students our age go volunteer. In fact, when we started volunteering, we were told that they never had students our age go volunteer. That surprised me, but it also made me proud that we're making a difference by spending time with them and spreading joy. We both understand now that we're making a difference one day at a time. In order to show you the difficulties of getting yourself back on your feet after being in need, let me tell you a story. I was only two years old when my parents came to the U.S. without having anywhere to live. They immediately started searching for relatives who, who would be able to take us in, but none could offer a shelter. It wasn't until my mother was able to contact one of my uncles, which was able to help us a little. While we stayed with my uncle, my parents would go out to search for jobs, but it wasn't easy for them since they weren't from here. Alas, my mother was able to find a job in an iron shop, while my dad struggled to get a job. My mom barely made enough to keep us moving forward, and due to this, I could see how much my parents would struggle every single day. It wasn't until my father was finally able to get a job. Months later, that was when my parents were finally able to rent a one-bedroom apartment. Regardless of not living in a one-bedroom apartment, things were still getting difficult because they were not making enough money. What made things difficult was that it was six of us living in that one bedroom. It came to the point where we didn't have food on the table, nor have money for other necessities. It took my parents four years to overcome the struggle to finally become financially stable. I share this story with you because even with the help of relatives and the ability to find jobs, my parents don't struggle to get by. I also have a story of my own, similar to hers. Like those in need, I have also felt helpless. It all started in the 10th grade. We had just been kicked out of our apartments. We didn't have a place to stay. And though we asked many for help, they didn't have enough room to house us. My mother would have to find a new place for us to sleep every night. But it was very difficult due to the amount of people we had. So we wouldn't have to be struggling. My stepdad started working overnight shifts just so we could afford a hotel for one night. But the next day was different. We didn't have the same opportunity as the day before. It was hard seeing my parents go through this situation. So my only goal was to stay by their side and help them with my siblings. This, having to find a place to sleep every night continued through my sophomore year up until part of my senior year. This was difficult for us, especially for my mother. It's hard to stay at someone's house for more than a day as you then become a bother to them. Many times we had to spend the night separated due to the lack of space. This experience going from house to house made me appreciate the little that I have. I know that sometimes we can be ungrateful and take for granted the things we have, but sometimes we really have to take time and really appreciate where we are and what we have. For those who are in need, Finding shelter each night, figuring out where the meal will come from, to finding a job can be a daily struggle. We would like for you to help someone who needs it the most. Today we challenge you and the class of 2016 to donate money or goods that we will then take to the San Diego Rescue Mission. Our goal is that with enough, enough support from senior staff and our community, we can raise $250. If you cannot make a monetary donation, we will gladly accept gentle-use clothing, canned food, or toys. 
Anything helps and will mean the world to those who need it the most. We will have the box you see here in room 10 throughout the next couple of weeks to collect any donations. If you're not able to donate today, you could always donate at www.sdrescue.org or myneighbor.org to donate to the Father Joe's Village. Thank you for listening to our senior talk. And remember, it is up to you to make a change in this world. <laughs>